Hello to me Philip and this is the Commodore 64C with a strange tape problem. Right so, so I'll switch on and there's our output. If I do shift and run stop you get load and press play on tape. So I'll press play and the tape plays. And I get six volts. Right. So we found Ghostbusters. And it says loading. Press play on tape. Now play on tape is pressed down. If I hit the Commodore key, it doesn't start the tape. And if I hit the space bar, it, it doesn't start the tape. And if I wait, it it doesn't start the tape. I should have 6 volts on pin 3. So when I hit the Commodore key, it should put 6 volts on pin 3 and start the tape, but it doesn't. What I have to do, I have to stop the tape and press play. And there's me 6 volts on pin 3 and the load screen will load. There you go, no overload but it stops the tape and it doesn't matter what I do it won't play again I've got to stop the tape and press play and there's me 6 volts back on pin 3 and that will load correctly I believe there's a sense pin on here which is sending data back from the cassette to the CPU saying play has been pressed but the CPU isn't sending an instruction to put 6 volts back on the pin. I've got to do it manually on here. So as you can see the game has loaded OK. Probably need a keyboard and a joystick in. There we go. Right, so that actually works. Now the problem is I don't know where the fault lies. Because I can follow the 6 volts from here and it goes to resistor 1, Q1, resistor 3, Q2 I think that is and then it comes to, if I remember rightly, pin 24 on the CPU so it all sort of like works, there's no shorts because obviously the game's loaded and it's working. It's been recommended I change the CIA chips, swap them around which is this one and this one and I've bought some sockets to do that or it could be a problem with the CPU itself I think they're about £25 or it could be a problem with the tape deck now I haven't got a spare tape deck I might have to buy a new tape deck if I cannot borrow one now I do have a Commodore 8 in 1 test diagnostic configuration whatever that is so this came today and it's got a dead test 8 in 1 dead test cart I'm a bit unsure how to use it but I thought I'll plug this in and see if it does anything so this is the first time I've plugged this in or used one. I should have probably done some homework first, but we'll bring up this. I'm going to switch on and I'm going to see what it does. I've got a green light, which is a good sign. Right, what does that say? Zero page, OK. Stack page. Is it running? Yep, it's doing something. Is it supposed to do that? That doesn't look right, does it? It's all gone blank. Oh, here we go. RAM test OK. Sound test. I haven't got any audio plugged in. Has it reset itself? Well, at least I haven't got any error messages. So I've got another board, which I could plug in. I'm sure you have all seen these before, but they're new to me. Serial port. I don't want to plug them all in at the same time. I'd prefer to do them one by one. 
I think that's normal because I think that's going to go count two. Still on count one. Count two, look. Perhaps the first one was count zero. Right, so we'll stop that. We'll switch that off. So I've plugged this in and this. Now this has got a couple of LEDs on, so that's obviously the right way up. And I'm going to switch it back on. So it says I've got, presumably that's 4.8 volts. Got 9 volts AC and 5 volts DC. I've got a little green light here called Sense. And the one above is Motor. It's actually... 4.88 there. It hasn't came up with testing the data cassette. So do I need some more software? Let's have a look. <clears throat> it says, warning. This test harness should only be used with Commodore diagnostic software. Please refer to blah, blah, blah. And there's a web address. Ah, oh, there it is. Oh, God. Look at all this. Di I haven't got a diagnostic program cartridge. That's the trouble. User port hardware adapter. I think I'm going to have to buy something else. Zero page test RAM is internal to the 6510MPU. Stack page done these. Color RAM test. Kernel basic and character ROM tests. So it's done these. Color RAM. RAM test. Zero page. But how do I get it to go into the next thing? Right, hang on. I think it's got something to do with these down here. So I'm going to switch this off. Always turn your C64 off before moving the configuration jumpers. Then use the following table to set the switches to the correct configuration for your program. You also need to configure the mode switch for the chosen image according to the table. Right, so what's it in at the moment? So we're in low, low, low. I know you can't see these, but they're on low and I'm in... XROM. So I'm on the Commodore 64 dead test. Well, it's not a dead test because it switches on. So I've got a ROM bypass test. C128 diagon. I don't think I need that. Disk drive test. Don't need that. 64 Doctor keyboard tester. I don't know which one I need to work with this extra adapter. I'm going to go for this one, the Dr. 64 test and SID test. So it's high, A15 high. The rest are on low and I want to be on game. Right, so we'll try that. We'll bring up Elgato and we'll switch on. Ah, got something different going on here. I've got a red motor light. What's this? Right, what's going on here? Interrupt bad U2. Keyboard bad. Didn't know my keyboard was bad. Cassette bad. Serial bus bad. Sit chip. Okay. Bad, bad, bad. U2 is bad. U2 is a C I S I A chip. Plug that in. We'll switch back on and see if that. Why does it say my keyboard? My keyboard? Or do I need to plug something into the keyboard? Is that what that is? Hang on. Because I've got, I've got something else. I didn't know what it was. I've got this. Oh, look. Uh, Keyboard diagnostic. So we'll take that out. Take the key, actual keyboard out. We'll put in a diagnostic. I don't know which way it goes. Oh yeah, there's a there's a missing pin there. So it's got to go in that way. Right, let's switch on. Here we go. Bad U2. I've got, still got a bad keyboard. A bad serial bus and a bad cassette. Bad interrupt U2 and a bad keyboard. What's wrong with my keyboard? Ah. Oh. Well, the only other things I've got left to plug in are these. So I may as well plug these in. So I'm assuming one goes in here and one goes in there. Say U2 says it's bad, but U1 over here does the cassette. I'm sure it does. Right, let's switch on now. Right, cassette bad, serial bus bad, user port bad. Paddles, doesn't say anything about them. So I've got U2 bad. Right, switch that off. There's another test I can do. Commodore... 64 burning test. There's another one there. C64 58622 plus plus diagnostic. High, high, low, and low. So 15 needs to be high. 14's high. 13's low. And I'm on game. So we'll try that one. There we go. What's this going to do? Now that's his cassette OK. Keyboard OK. And now it's running that again. So that seemed to test OK. Right, well that's strange. Try a different one. 
Commodore 64, CBM, Burnin and SID test. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, I've got no idea what is happening there. Keyboard test, perhaps? Trouble with this one, I don't know if it's finished or not. I'll try one more. I'll try this Jupiter Lander ROM bypass test. Right, this is the last one. I'm starting to suspect there's something wrong with the tape cassette rather than the CPU. It seems to be passing these tests okay, apart from U2, but that also said there was a keyboard problem. I don't think there is a keyboard problem. I haven't got a keyboard set up. So I don't know how I'm going to test that. I think I'm going to do a bit of research, but I've got a hunch that this is okay, and it might be the cassette itself. Done that one, done that one. That's Commodore 128. That's a disk drive diagnostic. Well, I haven't got a disk drive. Commodore 64 Doctor Keyboard Tester. I may as well try that one while I'm on. Do I need a keyboard plugged in? Or can I use this? Let's have a look. So I've unplugged the, the testing equipment and I'm just going to switch this on with the dead test board malarkey. I've got a keyboard test. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I've done something but I don't know what I've done. Let's have a look. Make that bigger so I can read it. Do not connect cassette deck and serial port connectors at same time. Please read instructions before use. User port fault U2. Serial port fault U1 and U2. That's me SIA, CIA chips, isn't it? But then I've got CIA timer 1 and timer 2, okay. CIA IRQ, okay. Do you need data, data set doctor or drive doctor? I don't know how to come out of this. Right, don't press restore. Right, so the keyboards work. I've got an X next to A, but that's... That's shift lock and restore. Right, up, down, left, right, fire. And the other joystick, which may or may not work. Right, fire doesn't work on that one. But I don't know if that's the joystick. I'm gonna hazard a guess and say it's just the joystick. Right, test joysticks, then hit restore. I'm gonna plug my tape deck in. Probably shouldn't, but I've done it. And then hit restore. Right, my tape deck started. I've got, I've got a motor going around on my tape deck. But I've still got a U2 and a U1 fault. So that's the CIA chips. I don't know how to get out of this page. I've bought some sockets to swap the CIA chips over. But this is reporting as a fault on both of them. So if I had a fault on one of them and I swapped them over and the fault moved, I would know it was that fault. But if I've got a fault on both of them, I can't swap them over. Although the fault on the tape deck might change. So I think that's my next task, is to swap them over. See if the tape deck will play automatically. Uh, but I might get a fault somewhere else. So that's coming up next. Now before I go and think about swapping chips over on here, I thought I'd take a quick look at the cassette deck. Now, now the blue wire is the sense pin on the connector. So the first thing I did was made sure that I had continuity from here to the to the board where the blue wire comes in on. And I started having a look at what could be wrong with it. And I noticed when you press play, there's a little catch. There's a little catch just here that moves when you hold the play button down. It just makes contact with that, which is a leaf, a leaf switch. Now that's on the schematics here. This is a service manual for a, an official data set. This one I've got is not an official one, but I think it works in the same way. And on the blue line, there is this leaf switch, which tells the Commodore that play has been pressed. So it's hard to see there, but connected to that leaf switch are two black wires, which are these two. And one goes to ground, 
and one comes to here which goes to there which is the blue wire so if i press play on here which is it's it's playing i should have continuity through that switch so i should have continuity from there to there and i don't and i think that's why i'm having to press stop and play all the time i don't want to take too much of this apart if i can help it so i'm wondering if i can just spray some contact cleaner in there and dislodge what's stopping it from working or do i just take two of these screws out and see if i can get in properly right that's what it looks like I don't know what these two pads are. I'll see if I can press it together with the multimeter. Yeah, I'm getting nothing. Can I get in with me Q-tip? There is a build-up on there, isn't there? Can you see some the stuff coming off? All right, that looks like it's working now. Oh, it's getting exciting. Oh, that went round. Yeah, man, they don't make that easy to put back on. Come on. It's not in place. It's popped back out. I think there's definitely something broken off this switch. It should be held in place there. And it's like a good contact when that moves across. But that's what's happening. So I think it's been dropped. I've got to find a way of keeping it there. But that's going to push it. Push it out. I wonder if I can stick something just there, a tiny piece of plastic there to stop it from moving that way. Right, I've just glued that into place there. Hopefully it's in the right place. I've added an extra small piece of cable tie on the right hand side there. And hopefully once the glue dries, that'll be enough to keep that in place when you press play. So we'll put this back together and solder these two wires up. So if I press play, I should now have continuity here. And I do. Okay, let's get this set up and see how it plays. So here we go, shift and run stop, press play on tape. There we go, found Ghostbusters. Now here it wasn't proceeding forward. Let's see if it's going to restart the tape when I press the control key. Oh, it started automatically before I pressed the control key, so it is actually working. So it's not a problem with the chips after all. And it's still going here. That's excellent. I fixed it. It was just that, that leaf switch. So what we'll do is we'll stop. I'm going to switch this off. I want to test it to make sure that the keyboard's doing it properly. We'll try that again, shift and run stop, press play, here we go, fantastic, excellent, we'll let that run, see if it loads up properly, and we'll come back to it, there you go, and that's it, game loaded, so, it was a faulty leaf switch, now there was somebody there was somebody over on on the lemon 64 forums uh, data set won't continue automatically i have to manually press stop and play again which is exactly what my symptom was but uh, it seems he's but never mind i changed to another data set and that works fine but there's also one here i opened the recorder sprayed crc here and there and now it's working so I suspect he's just had some dust in that contact. Now there was one more. I'm sure I seen somebody else and the guy had a, a loose black wire, which he couldn't find where it went. So I'm assuming that is from also from the, the leaf switch. But that's it. All done and dusted. What a good result. Well, as you can see, the Commodore 64 is back together and I've hooked up this little gadget so we're going to see if there's anything on this card this is a four gigabyte kingston card goes in there and it was a vhf gamer as said it's load 
asterisk comma eight comma one. So we'll give that a shot. We'll switch this on. There we go. Right, load. Uh, start. Is it eight comma one? Or comma eight comma one? Try that. Loading ready. Um, what do I do now? I'm gonna have to go to the website, hang on. The future was eight a bit. Or have I got a piece of paper? There we are. So you see here, load, star, eight, enter, run. How can I run? Still in sub file browser, CBM file browser. Here we go. Excellent. The thing is, the Commodore's only got two cursor keys and I don't know which one does which. So I want to come down. Commodore 16 plus 4, Commodore 64. D64, try that one. Uh, is this a list of folders with games inside? Try A. Is it working? Blimey. These aren't all on here, are they? Airwolf. I remember Airwolf, I think. G. Well, I'm looking for Gauntlet. There you go, Gauntlet. Return. Um, that doesn't work, does it? Oh, hold on, can I use this? No. Oh! I've came out of it. I've been using my joystick. Comma eight, comma one. Do navigate FB menu, either use cursor keys or joystick in port two. Well, I've got my joystick in port one. For multiple D64s, you will need to create an auto swap LST file. Right, well, let's try and find a game that has only got one disc to make it a bit easier for the demo. Oh, now it's loaded gauntlet. It has loaded gauntlet, I think. It's possibly not going to load because it's expecting three discs. I might have to turn this off and start again with a, a single disc game. Or is it loading? I don't know. I don't really want to turn it off while it's doing something. Have I got a reset button? I'm just wondering if one of these is a reset button. Yeah, look. Oh, I've got disc swap. No, not happening. I'm getting lights coming up on here, so they are registering as button presses. No, I'm going to turn it off. I'll try again with a single disc game. Okay, load, comma, eight, comma, one. Ready, run. 64, um, and remember Rambo. What does that mean? Well, there's Rambo. And I've got some audio there. Nope. I pressed a button on the joystick. Ah, oh, here we go. What's this? Rambo 3 plus 23. Why do you want to play Rambo, man? It's all these daft cracks. I don't want any of this. At this moment, I'd prefer just to press play on a tape. By the time I work out this, I could have loaded the blooming thing from a tape. And I've still just got a black screen at the moment. That can't be working, surely. Right, off. I'll put my joystick in two. I'm going to switch back on. Commodore 64 PRG, what's that? They don't look like games. There's got to be a better way to play games on a Commodore 64. I'm not having much luck. Uh, oh, 1942. What's all that? For single D64 images, just open a D64 by pressing return or fire and select the first PRG file to load. And I didn't select the first PRG file. That must be the first PRG file. Now it does say it's slow. Away. Oh god. Right, that is really slow. I, still, I guess it's faster than a tape. Have we got audio? Yes, we have. Right. Intro by Jack Alien. 
remember. Space to read or run stop to start. There we go. Please work. I'll go to full screen. Is it still loading? Spacebar. High score saver or trainers. No idea. H. Load or reset high score list. Reset. There. Left, right, up, down. Oh, brilliant. So it does work. I'm rubbish at it. I'm really rubbish at it. That does work. The SDIC thing needs a bit of research to work out how to use that properly. But it does look like the Commodore's working, so I can't complain. We'll fix the cassette player issue. Well, that's a terrible score, so I'm not going to put my name in. I'm going to put in Kip. He can take the... He can take the shame. Well, I've just plugged this in, because it's a fast loader. And it does say on here, there's a picture of the fast loader. I've plugged this in and switched on, and I've noticed it came up ready fast load which i've not seen before i'm just wondering if it's going to load up a bit quicker i'm going to try the same 1942 and without counting seconds i'm just going to see if it is quicker that was quicker definitely run stop where is it there are you doing anything come on is it waiting for me to press something Tears space bar. High score auto. I don't know what trainers is. I'll press trainers this time. Unlimited lives. Yes. Unlimited rules. I don't know what that is. Yes. What? Oh, yes. No, I don't want invincibility. It'll take all the fun away. Want to have all the time troubleshoot. No. Q. Key to get two planes. No. Start at... Well, I don't know what, what stage do you start at when you... So I think you start at 24, do you? Yes, so you must start at 24 and count down. Oh, rapid fire and keep my finger on the fire. I've got the cheats on and I'm still rubbish. Oh, right, well, I've had enough of that. So the fast loader did work and loaded that game up much quicker. Brilliant. So just to test that the 1942 wasn't a fluke, I've loaded up ghosts and goblins. And <laughs> I've lost my armour straight away. That looks terrible. I mean, this was this was brilliant at the time. This is a bit easier than the Amiga one I was playing on. Ah, oh, I'm rubbish. Right, I've had enough. Every teenage boy in this era remembers Barbarian. That is me, but I've got no... Why is it not playing sound? There we go. Well, I think I need to bring this video to a close. I could have saved myself some money. I think I paid about £40, £37 for this, which I didn't need to buy. Um, I've got it now, obviously, so it'll, it'll come in useful, no doubt. And I bought these. I expect they'll come in useful. So they can go in my Commodore kit. Now, this seems to be a bit of an uncommon fault the faulty leaf switch so if anybody comes across this video at a later date if you go on to pin one and pin six you should get all being well continuity if you press play and you do and that shows you that the the blue cable the blue sense cable and the leaf switch inside are working correctly if you don't get continuity that's what you need to look out for especially if your commodore cassette isn't playing automatically now i need to get the grips with the diagnostic kit and the sd2 iec gadget work out how to use them a little bit better i hope someone finds this problem and solution useful 
If you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm approaching 2,000 subscribers, so I hope to get there before the end of the year. Thanks for watching.